I got something that I bet your math teacher doesn't even know. Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. Did you know that there are two quadratic formulas? Anytime you have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, there are two different quadratic formulas to find what x could equal. You might be familiar with negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac whole thing over 2a. But there's also 2c over the quantity negative b minus plus square root of b squared minus 4ac. This quadratic formula will give the exact same answers as this quadratic formula. Would you like to see an example? Let's try out 3x squared plus 7x plus 2 equals 0. The ACs are a little tight. Let's give us a little more room and let's do this. The leading coefficient is 3, which means A is equal to 3. So this A will become 3, this A will become 3, and this A will become 3. The 7x means that B is equal to 7, so we'll change this B to 7, this B to 7, this B to 7, and this B to 7. And last, the constant is equal to 2, so we can make this C2, this C2, and this C2. And now let's simplify these. Let's bring down the negative 7, and we have plus or minus the square root. 7 squared is equal to 49, and then we're going to subtract 4 times 3 times 2, which is equal to 24. And on bottom, 2 times 3 is equal to 6. And then over here, 2 times 2 is equal to 4. We could bring down the negative 7, and we have minus plus the square root. 7 squared is equal to 49, and then we're going to subtract 4 times 3 times 2, which is equal to 24. And now we can simplify these. On bottom here, we have the 6, and on top here, we'll have the 4. On top, we can copy down the negative 7 plus or minus square root. And on bottom, we can copy down the negative 7 minus or plus square root. Inside of the square root, 49 minus 24 is 25. And same thing, 49 minus 24 is 25. On the left-hand side, square root of 25 is 5. And on the right-hand side, square root of 25 is 5. And now let's smush everything together and we're ready to finish up. We have x equals and the plus or minus right here means we're going to have two values of x. Both values of x will have a negative 7 over 6, but the first one is going to be a plus 5, and the second one is going to be a minus 5. And on the right-hand side, the minus plus means there's going to be two answers. They both have a 4 and a negative 7, but the first one is going to be negative 5, and the second one will be plus 5. So let's simplify these top two. Negative 7 plus 5 is equal to negative 2, and let's copy over the 6. And on the right-hand side, we have a 4 and negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. Both of these can be simplified, and they both simplify to negative 1 third. So they both gave the exact same answer. Let's put a box around it. Next, let's do the second one. Negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12, and that'll be over 6. And on this side, we can bring over the 4, and negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. Both of these can be simplified, and they both simplify to negative 2. Once again, we got the exact same answer. Let's put a box around it. So it actually worked out. This quadratic formula gave the same answer as this quadratic formula. One interesting observation is this was minus plus while this was plus minus. The minus version of this gave us the same answer as the plus version of this. And that will always be true. Here's another example where there's only one solution, negative one third. Both equations gave the same thing. And here's an example with irrational solutions. They both gave the same irrational solutions. And here's another example with imaginary solutions. How exciting. So I'm thinking there are two possible follow-up videos. The first one is to show an example of why this is useful. And there is a cool example why it's useful. For another follow-up video, we could actually prove that this always works. I showed a couple of examples here, but we can actually prove this. If you guys want to see either one of those follow-ups, let me know in the comments. How exciting.